Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey there, welcome to Growing in Grace. I'm Joel, the Breeze Man, and Mike the Cap Kapler. Uh, with me again, once again, for our Growing in Grace program. We've been spending several weeks here on the topic of game changers, the things that have uh, kind of basically have helped to revolutionize our lives in Christ. Not that uh, Christ in us has changed, so to speak, but we have become more and more aware of the reality of that life and what it really means and how it's lived out in our day-to-day lives. And so we've spent several weeks talking about some of the, oh, some of the key things, some of the key issues that we've come across that have really helped us to understand that. And uh, we think we're going to wrap it up this week unless more things come to mind, but but we'll be getting back to regularly scheduled programs uh, next week, <laughs> whatever that means, because <laughs> there's nothing regular about what we do. Just talk about the gospel. I guess that's that's regular about what we do. Yes, and at our age, uh, being regular is pretty important. <laughs> I think that's true. It's a subject for uh, maybe a, uh, a paid half-an-hour infomercial on some other radio station. Not here, though. <laughs> So we're going to talk about the gospel instead. I'm all for that. Um, let's see. We've we got a couple of game changers to wrap up with, and I think you mentioned last week we start off with uh, the exchanged life, or some would call it the, the great exchange. This is something that fascinated me when I first heard about it because, I, again, it was one of those things that I, I had to look into it further, not something I heard much about through most of my Christian life. And so what, what is the exchanged life? Well, in simple terms, it, it just means that God has taken something away and, and replaced it with something else. And Joel, what is that? <laughs> well, well what, what is it? I mean, because, well, you know, before I thought, I thought the great exchange was something that happened around right after Christmas <laughs> at the shopping store. I think they call it Boxing Day in Canada and England. <laughs> it's when they box everything up and take it back to the stores. <laughs> <laughs> the great exchange, the uh, the exchanged life, that's a term that really has meant a lot to me in my life. I'm not necessarily a person who really likes slogans a whole lot. I mean, I think that there are some slogans that are really, really cool and, and, you know, they, they have meaning and, you know, there's a good reason to have slogans and to have uh, things like that. And in this case, this slogan, this phraseology, this term, whatever you want to call it, the exchange life really helped some lights go on for me. In short, there's two things about it that stick out to me about the phrase, and there's more to it, but these the two things that stick out to me in the exchange life, the great exchange that happened, is that my old life in Adam was exchanged with Christ's life in me. I, I was born in Adam, and uh, I was born a sinner. What happened was that Christ's life came to replace that. It's not that I changed from a bad person into a good person, or from doing bad stuff to doing good stuff, but rather that the old Adam life that I was in died, and uh, the new life came in was Christ's life in me. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that my sin was exchanged for Christ's righteousness. As we talked about last week, he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So a quick summary of those two things... My old life in Adam died and was exchanged for Christ's very life in me, and the sinner that I was, my sin, was exchanged for the gift of God's righteousness. Yeah, you know, um, in Colossians 1.20, something we've touched on here in recent programs, it basically says that we are reconciled to God now. The word reconciled, it has several positive and, and really strong meanings, and one of them is exchange. Uh, So when we were enemies of God, so to speak, we were exchanged to God. So beyond dying for our sins, Jesus took our place so we could take his place. He received what we were and what our lives deserved while we received what he is 
and what his life deserves, this exchange that took place. It's really an, an incredible thing, and, and again, it, it ties into our, our identity in him, understanding that. Yeah, and uh, you know, the thing about the exchange life, just real quick, it's a, it was a term that was coined by Howard Taylor. His uh, father, Hudson Taylor, basically tried his entire life, he had tried it as, as a missionary to China. He was trying so hard to live the Christian life, trying so hard to do work for the Lord in the mission field and, and in whatever else he did. And, you know, a lot of good things came from that. I, I guess from what I understand, a lot of, you know, he helped in the salvation process of, you know, of course, God does this himself, but he was uh, very instrumental in a lot of Chinese people coming to Christ. But in doing this, he basically, the, you know, the life and energy was basically just zapped right out of him. And uh, he, he just... He knew that something was wrong, and so in a moment, in a kind of in a flash, he uh, realized that Jesus said that, I am the vine, you are the branches. And he realized, and I'm actually reading par- partially here from um, AELM.org, the, ex- the ex- Association of, Cha- of Exchange Life Ministries website, AELM.org. He realized that the vine is not merely the root that provides nourishment to the branches, but is itself the whole plant, the root, branches, and leaves. So Jesus isn't just our provider, but he is a part of us. And so the exchange life means that I have died, my work, my toil for the Lord, that, that's all gone and done away with. And what that's been replaced with is the fact that I am a branch who is a part of the vine. I am the very part of the vine who is my life source. My life source is no longer myself. My life source is no longer my flesh, but it's Jesus Christ himself. I've become a part of him, and he is a part of me. Yeah, so uh, Philippians 1.6, Joel, and the exchange life is kind of wrapped up in this. He has begun a good work in me, and he will be faithful to complete it. That's a part of the exchange life. Jesus received what we deserve, we receive what he deserves. He was made to be our sin, we were made to be his righteousness. He received the penalty of my, that my sin deserved, and we're receiving the blessings that his righteousness deserves. Because he was rejected, we are accepted. Because he was chastened, we have peace before God. And so this is the exchange. This is where we live today in the life of Christ. Yeah, and it's not that we have you know, some of that old stuff remaining because it's, 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 it's been a complete exchange. I mean, it really has, you know, it's, (laughs) we no longer have that old life in Adam. It's completely gone. We no longer have that sin nature. It's completely gone. All things have become new. All things have become new. So it's, everything is completely exchanged. We've talked about this plenty of times in the past on our program, and I do encourage you to perhaps search the growing in grace, uh, org website, We've got all our programs there for more on that, uh, because we could really talk for a long time about this. But moving on uh, with perhaps our final uh, game-changing topic, religion. (laughs) As at the time of this recording, uh, Steve McVeigh has just recently posted a, uh, a blog post about God's grace. And one of the things that he said on there that just really, really stuck out to me is that religion is the greatest enemy of grace. Grace is the essence of life in Christ. Grace isn't just a subject, as we've talked about, but grace is the essence of our life in Christ. And nothing happens in life apart from grace. And when we get away from grace, when it becomes about you or me, my efforts, my works, me trying to keep the law, then it becomes religion, and that is completely and diametrically opposed to grace. Religion and grace do not mix. It's not what life in Christ was ever about. Yeah, I think we talked uh, one time on one of our programs about this, Joel. I think the word religion originates, it's a Latin word, and it means to bind, uh, as in placing an obligation on somebody, and that's what religion does. It loads people down with mandates and, and, and rules and so forth, most of which people can't keep, at least not consistently. I guess we kind of started out with our our game changers uh, a number of weeks ago. One of the first things we talked about was uh, the garden, Adam and Eve, the two trees, the tree of life and the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And just kind of remember that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil 
really it's it's kind of the religion tree. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the tree of life is, is really more the, the person of Christ. God said, stay away from the tree altogether. I think the church world, whether they mean to or not, they've been encouraging people to uh, try and, and hang out around the wrong tree and uh, somehow try to take the fruit from that tree and make something good out of it when we shouldn't even be anywhere near that particular tree, but rather the tree of religion, but rather hanging out with the, the tree of life, which uh, you'd referred to recently as, um, you know, Jesus, as you just said a few minutes ago, um, Jesus, of course, the vine, we're just the branch. We can't even produce the fruit. We can't even do that. Uh, we, we, we bear fruit with his life flowing through us. Mm -hmm. Yep, and and what religion does is it tries to bear that fruit, uh, you know, through the through the efforts of the flesh, the through through self effort, through uh, me trying to do it for God. As uh, I think we previously said, you know, a lot of people think that I'm doing this work for God because God expects great things of me. You know, that's religion right there. You know, some <laughs> some people. And I understand this. Some some people think of religion as a good word because there's all these religions, and oh, we've picked the right one, you know, the Christian religion. But no, that's not what it's about at all. It, it's not about the, Jesus didn't come to start a religion. I don't believe that God designed us for religion. He designed us for life. He designed us to participate in His life, to be joined together with Him, not in religion, but in life. And there's a big difference between life and religion. And if you're going around trying to to do all this stuff, trying to perform this stuff by yourself, apart from grace and apart from the life of Christ, you know, apart from realizing that you're connected, not just connected to the vine, but you are a part of the vine and his life flows in and through you. If you're trying to do it by yourself, then you're going out there basically trying to do things by uh, religion and by, and by the power of the flesh. God didn't design us to live that way. He, he designed us to live in dependence you know, being dependent upon him and his very life that's in us. Yeah, and, and to wrap things up, you know, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. He told that to some Jews when he was teaching the law. Then later he said, he who comes to me shall never hunger or thirst again. Unfortunately, religion has people hungering and thirsting after righteousness because they don't realize what's already been provided for them yet. Yeah, that's right. Well, Cap, I... Uh, had no clue when we started this series, if you want to call it that, this, this uh, Game Changer series. I had no clue if we'd go a week or two or whatever. I think we've gone, I think, nine weeks, something like that. And uh, before we had gotten in, and it, this has been encouraging for me. This has just been a real good thing for me to just to remember some of these uh, important truths. And uh, before we had gotten into this, we'd been spending some time talking about the good news versus the bad news. And uh, I believe we were going to pick up <laughs> with the topic of sin. So uh, next week on Growing in Grace, we'll be done with the Game Changers series and getting back to some of the, you know, talking about good news versus bad news. Many people think that life in Christ is all about talking about sin and being against sin and preaching against sin. <laughs> so we'll uh, share some of that next week right here on Growing in Grace. Thanks for listening. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.